everybody's doing really well today. So I'm here to do a color and chat, which I haven't done in a very long time at this point. And I was hoping to talk about my recent trip to Italy. And I want to apologize right away. I am doggy sitting, babysitting a friend's dog and he's quite vocal. So if you hear a little tippy taps or noises in the background, that's what's happening. Uh, he's currently very, very enthused by uh, hiding under a blanket and pretending he's not there. So <laughs> we'll see how that progresses. But anyway, so while chit-chatting today, I'll be coloring in my Johanna Basford's World of Flowers. Um, it's a book in my collection that just doesn't get enough love. So I decided to work on it this month and I'm currently coloring this picture here. So I obviously have already started um, working on some of the greenery. I don't really have a color palette in mind uh, for the flowers. I'm just going through the leaves at this point. And I'm using Brute Funners uh, for the leaves so far. And I might integrate some other pencils further on. But so far, it's just Brute Funners. So I think it's been like two weeks since I came back. I can't even remember at this point. Um, but anyways, so one day I was looking at flight tickets within Europe. For those of you that are new or just aren't, I guess, aware, I am based in Berlin, Germany at the moment. So I was looking for some cheap flights within Europe because I haven't had a chance to travel since I moved to Europe, obviously because of the pandemic and everything. So I figured, you know, the pandemic's kind of been slowing down and it's time. So I was on the hunt for some affordable flight tickets and I found a trip to Milan, uh, Italy, <laughs> um, for 20 euros, which is like, I don't know, $25. Uh, and it was nonstop, straight flight, Berlin, Milan, and then obviously back. So I was like, you know, for 20 euros, like, I should really go. And I booked the tickets and I went on a Thursday evening. So I worked for most of the day on Thursday, flew out, the flight was quite short. And then I was there uh, the entire day on Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday I flew back. So I was super pumped. I was, I went alone. So I did a little solo trip. I've done solo trips before and I actually quite enjoy traveling solo because you kind of get to decide what you want to do, right? And sometimes I want to sit in a cute coffee shop and read my book for 45 minutes. And I feel like some people might see that as a waste of time maybe. And I also see their point, but that's kind of why I enjoy also taking solo trips because you kind of get to decide what you do and when you do it. So anyways, um, the trip ended up being eventful. Um, <laughs> so the trip there was just fine. You know, went to the airport, went through security. It was all smooth sailing. Uh, because my ticket was so cheap, and I did go with Ryanair. Oh, do you hear the tippy taps? That's Billy the dog. Um, <laughs> so I did go with Ryanair. So... The ticket itself is very cheap, but then they charge you for basically everything possible. So I knew this going into the flight, so I like ate beforehand. You know, it's not like you need to eat on this flight. It's super short anyways. And they don't allow even a carry-on. So if you wanted to get a carry-on, it was actually going to cost me more than my flight ticket. So I was like, there's no way I'm playing, I'm paying more for a carry-on bag than the trip itself. Like it was only two full days, right? And a couple partial days. So I was like, no. So I just packed everything that I needed into a tote because you are allowed to bring on like a personal item. So I just packed a tote. So I packed super light. Might have worn a couple sweaters into the plane, don't judge. But that was that was my packing. So at least the packing was very quick and very simple. Um, you know, I always knew that, if, of course, if I forgot to purchase something, I could always get it there. So it was A-OK. -okay. So take the flight, get there. And I had looked up in, a, like in advance how to get from the airport to my hotel. So I had booked a hotel for the three nights 
I used to always stay in, in hostels when I traveled, but I feel like I'm too old now. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm 26, so I could definitely still stay at a hostel and nobody, you know, nobody would give me a second glance, but still, I felt like I don't wanna share a room with anybody, you know, I'm past that phase, basically. So I booked myself a hotel, I found a quite an affordable one, and looked up how to get there from where the airport shuttle drops you off. So I find the airport shuttle and we mosey on into Milan. So the airport is actually an hour or a little under an hour outside of the city. Gosh, I'm so sorry if you can hear this crazy dog in the background. Um, so it's about an hour outside of the city. We uh, take the bus and as I had mentioned, I worked most of the day. So, you know, plus the trip, like the flight, plus the hour long uh, bus ride into the city. By the time I got into Milan, it was quite late. It was probably like 10 p.m. So I didn't have any plans of going anywhere that night. I just wanted to go to the hotel, um, you know, drop off my bag. Fortunately, I didn't have a lot of stuff with me, you know, cause I couldn't bring it. And then, you know, maybe grab a quick bite to eat somewhere and then just shower and go to bed. So that was my grand plan for the evening. Of course, I decided to stand out. You know, why blend in when you can be that person? So as soon as I get out of this bus, and it's like a coach bus, you know. So I get off the coach bus and like two steps on my, like on the Milan soil, I wipe out and it wasn't like a cute little whoopsies I tripped and I like caught myself no like I mean like my chest hit the pavement kind of fall and it was also mega dramatic because my purse like flew to the bushes and it was full because I had all of my stuff for the weekend so this cannon of a purse goes flying into the bushes my glasses fly off my face and when I tell you, my first thought was like, oh my gosh, I did not bring contacts with me. And I have awful vision. So I would, I was like, oh my God, like if I broke the glasses, I might as well go home, like just turn around and go back to Berlin because I'm not gonna be able to see a single thing. Like horrendous vision. I can't see far away. I can barely see in front of my face. So of course people like rush over to help me since I am spluted on this sidewalk. So I try to collect the little dignity that is left at this point, collect my bag from the bushes and, you know, pretend I know where I'm going. So most people are going like walking in the same direction because we get dropped off close to like right by their central train station in the city. So I'm like, yeah, like it's definitely where I need to go to. So I'm mostly on that way and my phone like is struggling with, um, getting situated because I have Google Maps open, you know, to try and see how I can walk to my hotel because I said the hotel would be only a couple minute walk from where we got dropped off. So I'm trying to get like situated and figure out which way I need to walk. My phone keeps on like recalibrating. My knees hurt from falling on the sidewalk. So I do a couple loops around this little like green area in the center. Finally, my phone like calibrates to where I need to go and I mosey on in that direction. I can see the hotel, I'm so excited. At this point, I'm like, I don't even want dinner. I just want to shower, uh, you know, check on my knees, maybe apply some Band-Aids because I could like, I could like feel my knees bleeding underneath my pants, which was marvelous. So I'm like, I just, I just want to shower at this point and go to bed, like forget dinner, I'll eat tomorrow. So by the time that I make it to my hotel, bruised ego and everything, it's like 10.30. So there's a gentleman at the desk. Um, and as soon as I walk in, you know, I said, hey, like I have a reservation, everything. So he asks for my passport and for like my um, uh, Corona vaccine documentation. So I give him all the information and just to kind of like set the scene right when i flew there of course i double checked the mandates for what i needed to get into the country 
and it was fine. I qualified. It just said you needed to have like two shots of, you know, the vaccine. And if you were coming from within the EU, you did not need um, a test. So you needed a test if you were not vaccinated. I was, I'm, I'm vaccinated. So I'm like, good, cool. I don't need a test. Not going to bother with it. So I get in, right? And he's like scanning my passport and everything. And then he looks at my, um, gosh, what is it? I'm forgetting my words. He looks at my vaccinations and he goes, okay, and where's your test? And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't, you know, according to the Italian government, I don't need it to enter, to enter Italy. And he goes, yeah, like you don't need it to enter Italy, but Milan has a law that if your last vaccine was more than six months ago, it's no longer valid. And he's like, and you need a negative COVID test. And when I tell you that my, my last COVID vaccine at that point was like six months and a week. And I was like, okay, so like, I, I don't have a test. What should I do? And I was like, you know, are there any 24 seven pharmacies or something where I can get the test done? And he's just like, no, you know, and actually like, we can't let you into the hotel without it. So I'm like, okay. So he's basically telling me to get out. He was like, yeah, you know, that's the law. We can't have you stay because your vaccine is older than the six months. Uh, yeah, we have this issue all the time with international folks because the laws to get into the country are different than the laws to actually be in the country, which don't get me started on, makes zero sense. So he's like, yeah, we can't, like you can't stay here tonight. And let me repeat, it's 10.30 p.m. at this point, right? I am in a foreign country. I've never been to Italy before. I don't know a single soul there. I also do not speak Italian. So I was like, okay, like, is there like a 24 seven maybe restaurant or like, you know, is there a bar that's open all night? He's like, no, like this man is being so unhelpful. Like the word he used most was no. And he's like, yeah, you know, there's a pharmacy down that way. And he like kind of gives me directions. He was basically like, yeah, I take a left, left, then a right. And there's a pharmacy. He's like, they open at eight in the morning and they do COVID vaccines. He's like, once you have that, you can come back and we'll let you in. And I'm like, okay, great. So I am on the street of Milan for the night. Fabulous. Love that for me. And I was like, okay, like, can I at least stay a couple minutes here in the lobby? I was like, my phone is dying. And because I had been GPSing, trying to figure out how to walk to this hotel in the first place, uh, when I was doing loops around that like green, green area by the train station, my phone was at under 10%. Like it was so in the red. And I was like, can I please just like charge my phone a little bit? Like I, like I can't, like, what do you expect me to do, basically? And I was like, can I please stay and charge my phone for a little bit? And when I tell you, this man was like, mm, I don't know. Like, and he looked so suspicious at me. And I was like, honestly, I was like 10 minutes. Like, I'm not going to try and camp here the whole night. So he finally, like, lets me charge my phone. And I stand by the wall and have my phone plugged in. And he watches me. So this man watches me charge my phone. Like I'm about to walk around and like cause a scene or something. So I stayed there like under 10 minutes, you know, kind of got my phone a little bit more battery. And I said, you know, like, okay, like I'll see you tomorrow basically, you know? So I leave and I have no idea where to go. Again, I don't know anybody in the whole country. I have never been to Italy. So I figured like maybe I could walk towards, like back towards the central train station because I figured, you know, if there's any like restaurant or bar or something that would be open all night, it's probably at the tra central train station, right? It was like a really big train station. So I go back that way and the whole time I'm texting my mother and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this man will not let me in. I am basically gonna be just hanging out at the train station all night. And uh, my mom's like, okay, like, let me look into it. Let me see what I can do. 
So she texts me, she's like, hey, I found a 24 seven pharmacy. She's like, go there, get tested. Um, and then, you know, you can go back to the hotel. So I hail a tab, tab. I hail a cab, like sex in the city style, hop into this cab and I'm like, okay, like take me to this address. And the man's like, I got you. So we get to the pharmacy and I basically jumped out, um, basically jumped out of the taxi in the middle of the street. Like the man thought I was absolutely insane. But at this point it was past 11 and they closed at midnight. So I was like, I need, you know, I need to get in. Cause I also didn't know how long, like if maybe they had a queue for the tests or, you know, you obviously have to wait for the results and stuff. So I jump out in the middle of the street, like, knees to chest run into this pharmacy and there's two on, like teenage boys basically propping up the counter and to say like I explained the situation I said hey like you know I just flew in unfortunately um apparently my vaccine is expired can I please do a COVID test and also like as I was walking into the pharmacy they have this huge sign that said like we do COVID tests here and then also before my mother recommended that I go there she also looked in to make sure that uh, like on their website that it said that they did the tests so going in I know that they do the tests so I you know jog in i'm like hey please like can i please do the covid test you know i'm having a hard time getting a place to stay for the night because of the situation and they, they both of them were like oh yeah like no like we don't do that at this hour i was like okay like w w when when do you start and they're like 8 a.m i was like oh gosh darn it because that was the exact same time you know that uh the front desk uh individual had told me about and i was like okay like Great. So apparently the pharmacy is open 20, like uh, until midnight, but they start doing the COVID tests. I think it was like 7 or 8 p.m., which of course I didn't know about at the time. But anyways, they were like, yeah, like there's nothing we can do for you. So I walk out um, back like onto the street and I mean like gutted, right? Because this is my first trip in so long because of the restrictions and everything. I am alone. It's almost midnight at this point. And you know, my, again, my phone is basically dead. So I need to keep myself entertained for like eight hours. I also need to find a place to be for eight hours. And this was, you know, a couple weeks ago. So still February, like it's cold. It's cold. Um, I am in a foreign place all alone. I was like, fabulous. Like great thinking, Ladaya. like way to go. So I decide as the last like resort to try a different hotel, you know, like maybe they won't notice that my COVID test is a week expired, not test, sorry. It's like, maybe they won't notice that my COVID vaccine is apparently a week expired. So I go into the sh um, a different hotel and it's like a fancy hotel. Basically, the only reason I went in is because it was right there. Like, it was right by the pharmacy. So I go in, and there's this super incredibly nice woman at the front desk. And I just tell her, hey, you know, um, I'm hoping to stay for this one night. And do you have any rooms available? So she checks, and she's like, yeah, you know. She's like, we do have a room available. And I said, okay, like, I would, I would, love, I would love to stay here tonight. And when I tell you, she did not even ask for, like, a vaccine or anything she was like do you have a credit card and I was like yes I do just she, she took my credit card information and she was like have a lovely stay I was so overwhelmed I almost cried so I had an amazing stay there I would have loved to stay there for the rest of my trip but in full honesty that one night cost me more than three nights at the other hotel and unfortunately, I'm not yet a lottery winner. So I couldn't stay there the whole time, but I had a place to stay for the night. And honestly, I was so overwhelmed. Again, I almost cried on the spot because I was full on planning on um, spending my night, like, I don't know, perching up somebody's front door, basically. So I get in and like call my mother, who's of course freaking out call my boyfriend 
he's freaking out because he's like what the heck like who dumps like somebody and like onto the street in the middle of the night like all this stuff and you know that was my evening at this point it's like midnight any thought about getting dinner has been gone out the window i just i want to shower and go to bed like i am exhausted i am still incredibly overwhelmed i still can't believe my luck that this hotel happened to let me in so i go to bed have a lovely sleep there was like 500 pillows on the bed it was fabulous and then in the morning, I went, um, I got up and I went back to that pharmacy where I went the night before, you know, the one where, with the two teenage boys that apparently uh, handle the pharmacy in the evenings and, you know, get my test and everything and I'm negative. So it's, it's, I'm golden. So that was my first night in Milan, right? And I'm like, I don't know what's, what's worse. You know, the fact that my first experience with Milan was, face first into the sidewalk or the fact that I almost spent the whole night on the sidewalk, you know, I, I don't, I don't, just don't know what the peak of that night was. So once I kind of, you know, pull myself together after that, I check out of this amazing hotel and it's the same woman at the front door, uh, at the front desk. And she's like, oh, I hope you had a lovely stay. I almost hugged her. I was so happy, so thankful. So anyways, I get tested, then I walk back um, to the original hotel. When I travel, I prefer to walk places um, instead of like taking public transport. Obviously, if it's gonna take me three hours to walk somewhere or like an hour and a half to walk somewhere, I will take a bus or a train or something. But this was like a 45 minute walk back to the hotel that I had booked for the whole weekend. So I just walked, it was lovely and you know, I'm also hungry at this point because I didn't I didn't have dinner the night before because the night before was a disaster. So I swing by this cute little cafe on my walk, and you know I don't I don't speak Italian. So me and uh, the the man behind the register uh, behind the counter, we're trying to kind of speak English and mostly me pointing at what I want. So for a drink i go oh like i would like a latte and he goes latte just the latte and i'm like yeah you know i would love a latte and then i also got this amazing chocolate croissant no it was nutella stuffed croissant and they like stuff it per order so amazing absolutely amazing but anyway so i get my croissant and i like sit down with my book and i'm waiting for my latte to be made and he brings it out and like just kind of like gives me a weird look and drops it off. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm drinking it and I'm like, wow, like, I don't know. Like I've had lattes before. I'm like, this one tastes different. Apparently latte in Italy, for any of you that go, means steamed milk. So for breakfast, I had a cup of steamed milk. Apparently you need to say, I think it's like latte macchiato, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, to get like what in America we call a latte. So yeah, for breakfast, I had an amazing croissant, uh, croissant and steamed milk, which was still delightful, but just wasn't what I was expecting or going for. So I get back to, you know, I get back to the original hotel. I show them the test. I check in. Yeah. So, of course, this hotel is not as close as, not as close, gosh, not even close to being as nice as the other one, but I mean, it makes sense. It's also a fraction of the cost. I drop off my stuff and I get going. So I kind of had a list of places that I wanted to see and visit while I was in the city. And I decided to go see the... Um, the cathedral that day and then also some other monuments and like uh cool buildings in that area so i did take public transport to get there because it was a super long walk so if you have never been to italy or if you're thinking of going to milan i would 1000 percent recommend seeing 
the cathedral. It's obviously a really big monument in Milan. It's also potentially the most beautiful building like I've ever seen. The architecture outside alone is just stunning, like breathtaking. And then also once you go inside, uh, you do have to buy a ticket. I think it was eight or nine euros. So like 10, $11. Um, the inside is stunning. Like the mirror, not the mirrors, the windows, the stained glass windows were just insane. Like I could have stood, I could have stood there for hours just looking and trying to see the little details and everything in these glass windows. So I did that that day. I also walked around a lot, of course, and um, I tried to, well, I went to see the um, Last Supper, the, you know, the artwork, and unfortunately they were all sold out for like four days or something to come. So I was there, this was Friday, I think, and the next ticket they had available was on Tuesday. And of course I was going back to Berlin on Sunday so I was not able to see The Last Supper, which was really disappointing, but hopefully I'll be able to go back one day and see it, you know. Um, but yeah, so if you, again, are also thinking of going to Milan, first of all, obviously make sure that your uh, last test is at least within the six months, and then also book The Last Supper in advance. I also walked around a lot, you know, and just kind of looked left and right. That's kind of my favorite way of exploring different cities is just basically walking and looking, <laughs> as silly as that sounds. So yeah, it was marvelous. I walked around a bunch and just took in the atmosphere, took in uh, the architecture and everything. And then I had to be back um gosh I had to I had plans um at I think it was like six so before I went I was looking at things to do in Milan as I said I kind of wanted to have at least a little bit of a list maybe not necessarily everything booked down to the minute of the trip but still and I saw that you can take a cooking class while you were there, like with like a professional chef and you can take a cooking class and um, you learn how to make a three course meal. So I was like, that sounds amazing. Like sign, sign me up, I'm interested. So that's what I had planned for the evening of that Friday. So I go there and Found it with no issues, which is a surprise on based on how the rest of the trip was going. So I find the, the building and it's um, this like little, I don't wanna call it an office, but she has like a professional kitchen and there's two girls sitting outside and they're speaking in English. So I said, oh, you know, hey, like, are you here for the class? Cause it wasn't an independent class. It was a couple of people, so they were, they were like, yeah, yeah, we're here and for the class and everything. So I met the two girls and they were from California and they were just doing a little trip um, in between their university semesters. So we went in and then later uh, two guys, um, also in their 20s, uh, joined us and they were from Portugal. So it was just the five of us. And the class was amazing. We learned how to make these like little biscotti looking cookies. Then we made pasta from scratch, which was so cool. I've never done that. And we made like a bolognese sauce. Excuse my Italian accent, of course, it's, tr it's garbage. And then we also made an appetizer, which was like an eggplant Parmesan. And it was all, delicious we made everything absolutely from scratch it was so cool i loved it i'm actually thinking of doing maybe a german cooking class now that i'm back in berlin i just think it would be really interesting and it was also like all you can drink wine so we had wine flowing and yeah it was just super duper cool it was nice to talk to these other individuals and then also of course 
the chef itself she's been in the industry for a very long time and then she also had um, one of her colleagues helping her just kind of assisting you know because if it was just her and then five I don't know students right it's just a little much so it was a cool experience and then I ended up just going going back to the hotel and of course we had leftovers so I went back to the hotel with like a bag of food <laughs> and went to bed I was exhausted I think both that day and Saturday I walked like gosh I don't even know 20 something 20 something thousand steps like close to 30,000 steps to me like I know maybe for some people that's not a lot for me that's a lot so went home was super excited had some cookies before bed went to bed so the next day I went to see um I think I would call it a church I can't remember the name of it but I will post it and my boyfriend was in a class that Friday so the day that I was walking around Milan and they were learning about a priest that used to preach in Milan and his church his parish is still standing so he's like oh like it'll be really cool if you can go see it you know blah 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 so that's why I went to see and it was really beautiful and it was definitely like off of the beaten path kind of I hadn't seen it recommended on any of the like what to do in Milan for the weekend kind of lists so it was much less busy which I really enjoyed so I did that then I went back to the cathedral and one of my friends had studied abroad in Milan I don't know how many years ago but of course I asked him like what would you recommend to do while I'm there and one of the things he recommended was going to this rooftop restaurant slash bar that is right by the cathedral it's actually on the top floor of a department like a really fancy department store and I have to say that department store needs to reassess their floor plan because if there was ever a fire obviously hopefully that will never happen i'm telling you i would be a goner i got lost in that building so many times because instead of having like the escalator or the stairs just going up like normal it would be like from one floor to the next it's here the next one is here and then it's here and then it's here so it like wasn't it was no it was just no and then some of the escalators were not working, so I had to find the staircases, and then the staircases would cut off at the next floor, even though we weren't on the ground floor yet. Like, wh when I thought I was gonna have to, like, set up camp in this, uh, in this store, I'm not joking. But anyways, so I went to this really, really fancy-pantsy um, department store, went up to the f top floor, and I was able to sit outside, and they, um, have a restaurant bar I got myself can't remember what I got I think I got a some sort of caffeinated beverage I can't remember what else I got cookies or cake or something anyways I didn't want to eat because I had breakfast now I can't remember where I had breakfast but anyway so I was good so I had a coffee and just like looked over the city it was beautiful again if you're going to Milan I would highly recommend it's stunning oh I remember okay so that day for breakfast how could I forget I had looked up like top places to go have breakfast in Milan and this one popped up and it was a cat cafe I think it's called like crazy cat cafe if I'm not mistaken so I was like yep sign me up I'm in I'm going so I went there and it was amazing they sat me right next to a sleeping cat so it was amazing love the cat they're so sweet i think they said there was either seven or nine cats there i can't remember now but yeah that's why i wasn't hungry i was like why did i have breakfast sorry i'm already forgetting it's only been a couple weeks and my memory's already getting spotty so that was great also would highly recommend that cafe if you are in the Milan area and enjoy seeing really cute cats and they were so well behaved they just like slept there some walked around but not no, like none of them were trying to steal your food or like dip their whiskers in your coffee or anything it was marvelous and then when I was paying I was I was talking to 
and the woman at the register who actually turned out to be the owner and she was saying that yeah the pandemic was actually really hard on the cats because they were not able to get all of their usual pets you know from all of the guests and stuff so they were happy they were reopened again because the cats were able to get all of the snuggles that they were requiring so thought that was adorable but I'm trying to think what else i did on saturday i took it kind of easy because frankly my feet were incredibly sore from the day before and i still walked around a bunch on saturday as well i love just walking in one direction and like looking at the architecture and stuff you know i don't necessarily need a specific destination in mind so that was mainly it i like walked around you know i looked at that one uh, parish that my boyfriend told me about went to the crazy cat hotel oh i also had to go get tested for covid again because according to the website the german government required it and then fun fact when i flew back not a single person asked to see it so that was great because it had cost me 50 euros and nobody checked it so love that for me um so yeah, that was kind of my Saturday, it was really laid back. I also did go get ice cream at this, um, like gel I was sorry, gelato, how uncultured of me. <laughs> this gelato place that also overlooks the cathedral, so it was absolutely stunning. And then I went back to my hotel. And once I was there, I looked up places to get dinner because I wanted to stay in the vicinity of the hotel. I didn't really feel like going very far. I didn't want to stay out late. You know, I had my flight on Sunday. And yeah, again, I just feel like, like I just wasn't really in the mood to go do anything crazy. Sorry, I'm trying to sharpen my pencil here. So I went back to the hotel, kind of relaxed for a bit, and then found an, like a restaurant a minute walk away from the hotel that had really good ratings and almost all the ratings were saying like oh it's a really kind of like a hole in the wall not very touristy like more local so i'm like perfect love to stand out right so i go there i got seated right away with no weight which was amazing and i'm trying to decide what i want and you know they have like the menu the menu the menu was all in italian they unfortunately didn't have any english translations so i was just kind of you know, winging it basically. So I got, um, I'm gonna, I believe the Italian way says bruschetta. I've always said bruschetta. Either way, that's what I got for an appetizer. And then they had like, what to my understanding was like small plates. So I was like, oh, perfect. I'll get the appetizer on like a small plate. So I got a small plate of pasta and a delicious sauce. And I wanted to get some wine. So I see they have a glass of wine. I'm like, cool, I'll order that. So I, I accidentally um, ordered a bottle. So that was a whoops. Um, it was just so affordable. I just assumed that it was a glass. So I sat alone at this table with also way too much food because the plates ended up not being small sized. It was just an affordable restaurant. And so I had all this food, which I'm not complaining, it was delicious from start to finish. And then also a whole bottle of wine. So as my little nephew says, uh, yummy good. It was fabulous. So I did that and then stumbled back to the hotel um, I'm glad I was close to the hotel because I definitely drank a lot of that wine and it was amazing, especially for the price, considering that I thought it was only a glass. And then I just went to bed and the next day I traveled home. And yeah, nobody checked my vaccine status or the test that I had paid 50 euros for the day before. So that was fantastic. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be prepared because I'm like, I had issues when I first got to Milan. I don't also, I don't also want to have issues in Berlin. So that was my trip. It was definitely a really eventful at the beginning. I wish it wasn't uh, because it was not a fun experience to 
yeah, it was just, it was scary. I was, yeah, I don't know, like, I don't know what I would have done if the other hotel would have also rejected. I guess I would have probably just like hung out at the train station till the morning, which was more than eight hours away. And I did go into the train station and they're like, they had like restaurants, they had like a McDonald's and stuff and coffee places and all of them were closed. So I literally would have had no place to like hang out basically. I would have just had to sit on a bench for eight hours with a dead phone. So that would have been great. So I'm definitely very, very fortunate in the sense that I was able to find that other hotel that just happened to let me in. No questions asked, I love that. Overall, I loved it. I thought the food was magnificent. I really enjoyed um, the city and the people. Oh, also on Saturday, I went to their um, like river, uh, river walk, I guess you would call it, and walked around there. I also found this really cute like bar cafe that faces the water and I sat there and um, I was planning on just getting like a coffee but uh, the man that was talking to me he was so excited about the pizza that they were offering he was like telling me all about it and I was like okay like I have to I have to get the pizza now just because he was so nice and I'm a complete sucker and I have to say it was spectacular like it was so good so that was also a part of my day on Saturday. Completely forgot about that. Sorry, this video is a complete mess. But I did a lot of reading during this trip, which I found to be great. You know, I love reading. I love being able to um, relax and just take in the environment and yeah, like have a nice meal. I'm a very relaxed traveler. I enjoy taking breaks and just appreciating the atmosphere and my surroundings. I know that's not the type of travel for everybody. I know some people prefer to like go, go, go and see as much as possible. I would rather miss a monument or two, but not have to run around. Uh, to me, that's really stressful. And that's not, you know, that's not what I want for my holiday. But I know it's different for everybody and that's completely fine. But yeah, I had a great time aside from me completely wiping out the second I got to Milan and my little debacle at the hotel. It was a great experience. I would highly recommend it to absolutely everybody. Also, if you get the chance, please take the cooking class. Um, uh, the, the, the business or like, you know, well, the woman that owns the business, she does personal personal cooking and then also these cooking classes, but the business is called Chef and the City. So it's based on like Sex and the City. So if you wanted to do something like that, five out of five would recommend. She was fantastic. She was so friendly. She, first of all, also sends you home with a bunch of the food because you obviously make too much food to consume. Uh, the overall price I think was like 50 or 60 euros considering the fact that it was a three course meal. The cooking class, like the whole thing itself was like three hours long and you got a bunch of wine. It was definitely a good deal. So I would highly recommend, but yeah, overall very exciting. I'm glad I got to travel again. I wish it had started off smoother, but I'm also really liking this picture. I think this is all the greenery that I'm gonna do. So I need to decide what color palette I want for the rest of the florals in here. But I'm really excited to be coloring in this book again. It's been a while. But yes, I'm sorry that this video was kind of long, but I just wanted to chit chat, you know, jibber jabber, gossip, whatever you wanna call it. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see everybody in the next one. Bye. Bye.